Hey guys, we're here today recording with an Orangu Chikram building guide. Uh, now I'm going to cover Chikram as a whole, and that's probably how I'm going to title this, uh, something around Chikram, but I do want to specifically build the team itself for the example around Orangu. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. One, of course, because we did actually have a commenter ask for this. Uh, so of course, shout outs to our commenter, uh, Elisha uh, Hirschfield, I believe is how you say it, uh, who had asked how to use an Orangu Chikram team or how to build one. So I do want to go over that one specifically, but I'm going to highlight exactly the examples of what makes a good trick room team in today's video because a lot of the concepts overlap it's really just based on what setter you want if you enjoy this and you want to see some more content like it of course like and subscribe and answer the comment question of the day what would you guys like to see me cover next on the channel for these builders i have a few ideas um i have a couple in particular um there was one actually from the last video i can still go over uh by uh weiss valentine but i am i did want to save it because it was a little bit saving me with the last one but i might i might do it next week if i don't have any other ideas that i like more uh but with that said let's get started by going over of course just like we did last time i want to go over some trick room teams that actually have done some really good performances now sadly there is only one that actually has done a what i would call a really good performance in competitive and that would happen to actually be the liam gilbert uh aka gilbo trick room team that we actually did cover on the channel when i i did interview gilbo um but this one uh, is literally the only team to actually make a top eight bracket of in the entire regulation C trick room. It's the only one I did double check. I double checked as well for Fort Wayne. And I double checked for EUIC. There are none yet. So I'm hoping the Portland can maybe give us representative number two. But it is the only one. However, we do have a lot of other day two options, such as, of course, uh, Hoang Dot Luang's trick room team from Sydney Regionals, which has size spam. I'm actually pretty shocked to see a size spam on this list. I don't even think it's the only one. I think it's like one of three or four. Uh, but this was a pretty cool concept, of course. Uh, this one focuses around Ndidi. The first one focused around Goth. We do see another Trick Room Ndidi team. Uh, this was another City Regionals. Uh, then we go into Fort Wayne, where we actually do see a lot of Furgraph. Uh, this is, of course, because half of the ones that well half the trick room teams at Bor Wayne were wolfie and his building group so it makes sense that multiple furigs came up because we do see furgraph from wolf we see uh gothitelle from graham blake uh blakely's team which is a similar adaptation of the uh liam gilbert team but it does have a little bit of differences like arcanine for example is on this team it's a pretty big distinction here and goldango for Flutterman as well uh we go to aaron trailer who's another furgraph team of course we have aaron clemens who has uh, the Trick Room Sun team, actually. I do like this one a lot because it's Sun Sand, and I'm pretty partial to that as my competitive beginnings were watching Draft League in Generation 6, where I was seeing, uh, I, I th oh my god, I'm forgetting, oh shit. It was the it was the Holuchus team in the GBA who who did like Zard Y Sand with Titar, and that was like one of the first introductions to competitive I had. So it holds a special place in my heart seeing uh, Chiu Sun with uh, Tyranitar AV as well because it's a it's a pretty cool team at least. I would have been a little more partial to Terra Blast Psychic of course, a little bit of special place in my heart for that Titar set with Ndidi, but hey, still not bad. Uh, we have, of course do have yet another uh, size spam. This one with Hatterene actually, and I do like the Lily Cool aspect here. I think among size spams is probably my personal favorite, I would say, of the ones that have top cut. Because I do like the idea of having a fast mode. And I'm actually going to get into the importance of that in the builder as well. Because I do think it's actually extremely important in this format to have your trick room having also a fast mode. Uh, and I'll get into that later on. We do have another one from EUIC, of course. Uh, this is actually the first one of two in EUIC. And funny enough, uh, if someone can guess in the comments below, I'll pin your comment, where this team placed. There was about 80-ish teams that made day two. Where do you think this one placed? Three, two, one. The highest trick room team in EUIC ranked 50th in the day twos. And there was just about 80 teams. So 50th is the highest one. So clearly trick room is not in a great place right now. Uh, however, this one in particular has a Mimikyu trick room. And I do think this is another really interesting setter. And finally, though, we do have yet again another Furgraph. So it seems like Furgraph, Hatterene, Indeedy, Mimikyu, and Gothitelle are like the trick room setters right now. Which personally, I can't lie. I'm a little bit more partial to Orin Guru. I like Furgraph a lot. I think Furgraph actually is probably the best one in this format. Uh, it's able to block a lot of priority spam, and the Shan Pao teams are running rampant with priority spam, with usually Palafin and Dragonite, or even like Palafin uh, next to like a Dragapult, which Dragapult can still run priority, it just doesn't typically. Uh, but Shan Pao typically will run priority next to one of Dragonite, Palafin, or even both. Uh, occasionally, you'll even see it can Gambit on those sort of builds, but it's a lot more in common these days. Uh, the point being, though, is that it's kind of it's kind of obscene 
in my opinion, that uh, that we do not see an Oran Guru here. Because I do actually think that Oran Guru is a really good option in this format. Uh, one of the few reasons that I do like Oran Guru is because of the fact that this thing does have the ability Inner Focus. Now, I will say Telepathy does actually have some merit in some Chicken Cores, and the one today that we are going to build around actually will be probably... Well, I'm actually not going to build around the Telepathy one today, because I do think that Inner Focus is going to be a little more consistent here. Uh, but specifically going with Inner Focus, this will mean that you cannot get flinched. Uh, we can then proceed to go with a Terra Grass set with Mental Herb. Uh, back in the day, I actually used to be a lot more partial to the Terra Dark set with Safety Goggles. Uh, for any older viewers who were around during Regulation A, you'll actually remember, uh, well, you might remember, I should say, when I did Oren Guru, I think I even specifically went as far as saying I thought that anyone who ran this particular build was moronic. I would like to backtrack that, actually. Uh, I do think that Grass is a little more consistent. Um, I've been spored way too many times, actually. Um, after getting like knocked off or even still just the fact that I don't usually tear or crew to begin with and just getting taunted really sucked uh, with this at the very least uh, spore is a lot more in the minority and I feel like just getting around stuff like taunt encore disable is also just really valuable and especially with manual non prankster taunt mods like talent flame in the rise uh, this is definitely the better set right now uh, at the time, I think it was definitely Tower Dark. Right now, though, with Murkrow not being the premier Tauntmon and Grimstyle being like the second best Tauntmon, I do think that with both of those having fallen off a lot, Talonflame is a really big one. Uh, we do have some other Taunt options, of course, if we go through the list. Uh, stuff like, um, actually, there's not really a lot in here that sufficiently runs Taunt. I mean, Champ Pao is kind of an okay Tauntmon, actually, to be honest. Um, but there's not really a lot of others. They're all manual taunt right now, though. Um, and then we occasionally have, like, Imprisoned Gardevoir, but that's such a rarity these days. There's not really a lot of taunt in this format, to be honest. Uh, but it still is more common on non prankster because you don't really run it on Murkrow anymore. And even if you do run it on Murkrow, it's just not a common Pokemon these days. So Terra Grass and Metal Art. This is definitely how you're going to run Oren Guru. You're going to definitely run Oren Guru for Instruct, Trick, and Trick Room. These are objective moves you do actually need on Orn Guru. Uh, I feel like the Instruct and Trick Room, it's really the reason you run Orn Guru, actually, because you do set up the Trick Room with, of course, Click and Trick Room. And then you do have Instruct, which can be really powerful, actually, in turning the tide of games. You can outright KO both Pokemon at once, usually, because of the fact you have an Instruct partner. Uh, now, typically, you're pairing this with a really good spread option, whether it's Torkoal or uh, there's like Hatterene as well as a pretty good one. Uh, but you're typically pairing this with a Stab Terra option that is going to be going for a spread move, and that's going to be your Win Con, usually. I've even, I think I even remember seeing like Goldango next to this in series one, uh, but I can't remember 100%. I think there might've been like a team or two that ran it. Uh, but typically though, you are running this with like Trick and Mons. Uh, so one of the most common options, uh, there's actually Belly Bolt as well, but that's actually specifically the reason that we're not running the Telepathy set today. Because if we were running Telepathy, it would be because we were running Belly Bolt. And that means our third move is Bulldoze. Now, because we're not doing that, uh, I do actually think we have a little bit more freedom in this third move. Uh, we can actually go with something such as an encore we can go with uh we could still go with bulldoze but it doesn't really have a lot of purpose uh we could even just avoid protect a little more easily uh we can go with something like a psy shock uh, i think that one of the things that i'm actually going to consider and this is mostly because i don't actually see it ran a lot is going to, well actually we also do have skill swap which is kind of cool uh skill swap might actually be something we look into um for now though what i think i'm actually going to consider here is going to be future sight now i do think a future sight could have some merit on uh, just baiting dark types and there is a reason that i'm going to throw this move on in particular but i do want to save the surprise for later on uh but i do think a future sight is actually pretty good uh despite the fact that we have a million dark types right now and the move could be seen as a little useless uh you could go with psy shock as well that is a pretty decent option for a little bit more direct damage on amoongus same as psychic uh but i do like the idea of future sight baiting in dark types because of the pokemon that we are going to throw on after torkoal but ultimately, though, I think this moveset would go with, like, a Protect tier. Um, as far as final investments go, I'm actually just going to steal an Oren Guru from one of my other teams. Um, truthfully, uh, this one is the one that I typically go with, uh, albeit this one's Bulldoze. Um, actually, yeah, we could just literally tweak it. Um, typically, I just go with Max Fizz Def. Uh, the reason being is that there's not really a lot of specific calcs that I have actually found that Oren Guru really does need. Um, we'll actually go with minus speed on this team, max, uh, very min speed. This is to ensure Instruct can go off as quickly as possible, as Instruct is not a priority move. Um, but essentially, though, I do like the idea of just going with Fizdef or Guru. Uh, the format does already lean very Fizdef to begin with, uh, physically offensive to begin with. Uh, but on top of this as well, there's not really a lot of special threats that we really need to take hits from. Uh, if we look in, if we think of like special Pokemon off the top of our head, uh, what's one that comes to mind? I would think of like a Fluttermane with like a Choice Specs uh, versus, let's say, just Fizdef or Guru. So if we take out all of these Fizdef on Flutter on a on a Orin Guru. We're still able to actually take that hit pretty comfortably. Even Terra Fairy actually is a near guaranteed. So actually what I think I'm going to do instead, I think I'm going to actually opt to 
invest to make sure that is a guaranteed take. Um, so we're going to go all the way to, hold on, I'm running the math right now. Um, actually, I'm just going to take it out of this def because there's no reason not to. So we're going to go to, uh, we're still going to go with bold, but I am going to go with 20 spdf. Um, this 20 spdf should actually be pretty valuable, uh, mostly just to make sure that we are able to take a modest choice back Terra Fairy Fluttermane. Uh, if we want to go a little bit further, actually, we could even go with like a sassy nature. Um, we, if we go with literal, uh, just about max max, I think we need like 244 and plus spdf. This would actually make sure that we can take that modest Terra Fairy Moonblast even with uh, Chiyu next to this. Uh, the reason I don't like this one in particular though is because of the fact that Chiyu will typically click a spread and with Terrafire Gleam plus like a just heat wave from Scarf Chiyu, you're usually going to get massacred anyway. Um, so I, I think I'm, well actually, hold on. Um, I guess what we could do in that case, we could actually just pair this with like a Fig Out Mon, um, and then force Terra on something else that's not Fluttermane because that actually would have a lot of merit. So we actually are just going to go with, uh, Max Fidef here. I think that, that with Fluttermane Chiyu being such a common lead in closed sheet, which is Probably where you're going to use Orangu. We're actually just going to max Spidef here. Uh, so, max Spidef Orangu, that might actually just be a play in this format. Maybe my opinion on Fizdef was a little bit dated for Series 2 because that's where I last ran Orangu. But max Spidef, I do think that will be a bit better because one of the most common leads is probably going to be the just the lead of just the Chiyu Fluttermane. Uh, it's a pretty common lead, either that or Chimpao and Dragonite is usually pretty common, or like Chimpao Palafin. Uh, but in those cases in particular, you're probably you're probably just gonna have to fake out a slot and be fine and just hope you get the fake out prediction right uh, which even still burning an odd set terror there is also pretty valuable going into torkoal uh this one's probably the most brain dead option uh but it is almost a mandatory pokemon trick room uh we are gonna go with earth power heat wave uh eruption and protect this is like the most common torkoal spread you're ever going to find in competitive uh we could always go with support torkoal as well but i do like that more on like an actual sun team uh, you can still run Sun on Trick Room. There's actually a lot of viable options such as Brute Bonnet, Fluttermane, etc. Uh, we might add one of those to the team later on, but I don't like going with the support Torkoal unless it's a hard Sun team. Because hard Sun usually benefits from like helping hand Torkoal clicking into Fluttermane, but those typically don't run Trick Room. So for the sake of this team though, an offensive team with Torkoal is always going to run this set. Uh, if you're running any other set, it's most likely because you're ditching Earth Power for Clear Smog or maybe Protect for Clear Smog, or even going as far as ditching a Heat Wave for Flamethrower. With Orangu in particular though, you really do need the second spread because you do like the option of clicking either Heat Wave or Eruption as a dual spread and just making sure you're dealing off damage to both Pokemon as efficiently as possible. This way you're not caught off guard by Protect, uh, so making sure that you're at least dealing damage to something is always valuable here. So I do like the idea of having the second spread on Torkoal, even if objectively speaking, Heat Wave is not exactly the most mandatory move this format. I do think that next to Orangu though, it is a staple. Uh, moving on though, um, next up, why did we uh let, let's let's see so the next thing i wanted to go over right the future state pairing so we're gonna look into a fighting type and now one of the best fighting types on trick room is none other than iron hands uh hariyama is another really good staple and i do actually kind of want to do a hariyama build now that i'm mentioning it but iron hands um i'm gonna really quickly show the iron hands that you would probably run it's almost always gonna be assault vest on these sort of teams you can go with sword stance um and next to orangri it's actually not a terrible idea one of the benefits with the Safety Goggle Sword Dance set is the fact that you can definitely just start massacring stuff as an offensive threat. Uh, however, I do like the idea of Volt switching into Torkoal on Trick Room, especially on the turn you're actually clicking Trick Room in case you can't get a good fake out turn off. Um, that definitely can have some merit as it will allow Torkoal to sweep easier. So I'm a little bit more partial with this particular team to actually go with the Salt Vest. And we will go with uh, Terra Grass. Terra Grass does help a lot more with defensive calcs. We're going to go with Fake Out, Wild Charge, Drain, Punch, and Volt Switch here. Uh, as far as our spread goes, um, let me see. So there was a spread in particular that I wanted to steal. Um, right. So it was this one. Uh, so essentially the logic here, we're going to actually dump all of our speed out of the set, but otherwise we're going to keep it. Um, so essentially with this spread in particular, though, um, the 148 should be some sort of offensive calc. I believe this was for a wild charge kill. Uh, the, the 12 and 92 is for, even if you don't tear out, you can make sure that you're guaranteed actually taking a hit from I think it was like adamant non-life orb a great tusk which is pretty cool um we are gonna switch of course the sword stance though to a to an uh, fuck full switch that's what i wanted okay uh, and then the rest is just spdf with the max hp um we are gonna go with minus speed on the set in particular uh with av I actually do like going with mid speed 
Uh, you can make a merit as well for going, if you don't want to go with min speed IVs, you can actually go all the way to 16. Uh, the reason that I in particular actually like this one a lot is because of the fact that one, you're still getting off a slow volt switching to a majority of threats. Uh, but more importantly, number two, uh, this actually does make sure that outside of trick room, you can actually outpace Garganagle. Uh, now, Garganagle is typically a mod that you don't actually like fighting with trick room up because Garganagle can get pretty free salt cures and also it's a wide guard threat potentially for Torkoal. So typically, actually, Garganagle is a Pokemon you do like handling outside of trick room, which means that with Drain Punch, for example, you can opt to, of course, handle just going into the Garganagle spot and just drain punching it now i will say that typically the only time i really like running this is on sword dance builds however with the right partner you can actually still force a lot of ko's the drain punch plus the partner slot uh whether it's earth power torkoal or really anything else uh for this particular build though i am going to go with zero speed i think that the earth power torkoal will at least help a little bit with that but again you need to make sure that you are a little bit careful of that garganacle because they don't typically run minus speed and making sure that you can just make it killed is very important. So scouting speed tiers there is gonna be important with this. Uh, but with Iron Hands though, we can essentially pressure any sort of really strong dark types such as Tinglu, Chiyu, Wochian. Wochian's the one issue, but Torkoal can handle that one. And then Chien Pao, both of these can handle. Uh, for other dark types that are prominent, stuff like King Gambit, Iron Hands is great at handling that, whether it's Terra Flying or ter just non-Terra, or even just like a Terra Stab, you can handle pretty much any Iron Hands. Uh, not Iron Hands, uh, King Gambit with Iron Hands. So it is definitely a pretty good option there. Uh, and essentially though, your game plan would just be to Drain Punch Spam. Uh, you can also go for Sword Stance. However, again, with this set in particular, the team that we're going to build at least, I do like the Volt Switch option a little bit. Now, uh, moving on, because we're not doing an Indeedee team, one of the things I love having on these sort of Trick Room builds is a priority option. Uh, you've probably seen this from a couple Trick Room teams I've covered on the channel, uh, but I'm actually going to throw on a Palafin. I've actually been partial to Palafin here. I know that Sun obviously does weaken this, but Palafin is an incredible monster in this format. Um, now, we can definitely subsidize Palafin for something else like a Dragonite. Uh, Dragonite does have some merit too. Uh, Dragonite's thing would probably be like a Lumberry set or like an Assault Vest set in this team because we would be going for an Ice Spinner here. This would allow for easier fake outs and it also allows for just other threats to maybe be E-speeded down by Dragonite, which is pretty valuable here. Um, I think I'm actually going to go with Dragonite for this team just because it's a little bit different from what I'm typically building with. Um, and we are going to go with the Assault Vest Dragonite here. Uh, we're going to go with the inner well we're gonna go with multi-scale because we're assault vest um this team in particular we're gonna go with e-speed ice actually i'm gonna go with bandit dragonite because of the fact that we do have the we do have the av iron hands uh and i do like that a little bit better here uh though you can definitely flip them around uh you can go with av dragonite which would just be four attacks as well it's literally like the same four attacks i'm gonna show you guys today uh where it's e-speed low kick ice spinner and outrage uh you can subsidize one of low kick or ice spinner for terra blast flying as well that is a pretty valuable item uh but we're gonna go with terra normal instead now typically despite the fact this is a trick room team i still actually do like my dragonite creep here of 108 with the 140 into hp and then we go with max attack uh this is typically because dragonite is most likely going to be clicking priority e-speed uh if you're not clicking priority it's typically because trick room is not up and you're gonna go for something slower or just because you're fighting some really fast threat. Uh, but I do like the idea of just going for like a low kick into Tinglu and just Okoing it. Uh, so I do like this option in particular. With this threat in, in this with this spread specifically, uh, we could go with obviously max HP. And if you think of it this way, we have 148 HP. However, if we dip down just by four, we can go with four in each of our defenses. And now both of those go up by one point. I've probably explained this logic, but I'm gonna explain it in all these builder videos because I don't know if this will be someone's first, second, third, etc. builder video. Maybe this is their introduction to VGC. So for anyone who has heard me nag about this on the channel a million times, I'm very sorry for the repetition here. Uh, but I wanna make sure this is beginner friendly for people who might wanna use this team. Uh, so we have these four in particular. Uh, this is essentially a really strong trick room core as it is. Uh, Dragonite obviously is a really good cleaner here, and this does give our team a fast mode. But what about if we can't actually get trick room up? There's still a lot of things that we can actually do here to make this work. Uh, one of the things that we can actually see if we go through all of these particular trick room builds is that they all do have actual fast options. For example, the Gilbo team does have both Flutterman and Xian Pao here. This way then, if they can't get up Trick Room for an Iron Hand Sweep, they can still win. They obviously do have the Jet Punch Palafin though in Trick Room, so their team isn't hard cucked by it. And they do have Protect on these two Pokemon to stall out if they need to get rid of it. For this team, yet again, we do see a Xian Pao here. Uh, we do see the Trick Room mode. We have Halucha as well as a Fast Mode for the Size Spam. And we have Mouse Hold as well just for Follow Me Shenanigan It's pretty decent both in and out of Trick Room. 
we have Iron Hands and we have a uh, Chiyu and Fluttermane is a fast one here. Obviously, Chiyu can be fast or slow. It's probably not going to be a max speed Chiyu, but it is an option as well as Dragon Hands Gyarados being pretty beneficial here. It can benefit next to Follow Me and DD, and that works out pretty well. We have on this particular team, we have obviously Trick Room with Iron Hands, and we also do have on the fast side Tailwind with Chomp. Uh, this works out pretty well. I would not recommend running Tailwind and Trick Room, but Wolf is a madman. He can do whatever he wants. Uh, we have on this team in particular that Goldango is probably mixed speed that can work out pretty well. Uh, we also do a Palafin, obviously. And this team doesn't actually really have a fast mode. Uh, Goldango might unironically be the fast mode here. If not, like E-Speed Arcanine is still pretty good. And they have a lot of fake out priority as well as Jet Punch Palafin. Everything besides these two is priority. So that can be a little bit more excused, especially next to Rage Powder and Moongus. Uh, we have Aaron Trailer's team, which is, I think this is literally like the same team as well. It's just different order. Um, maybe there's minor differences and stuff, but it's basically the same team. Uh, for this team, yet again, we do have the Pricer Murkrow with Tailwind, which next to Chiyu Fluttermane can be really deadly, uh, especially because they're not Booster Fluttermane. Um, we do have this team in particular, which is Lily Cole, actually, which is a really good option, and I do like Lily Cole a lot. Uh, now, Lily Cole in particular is actually really strong, uh, as it just does give Torkoal a really strong mode outside of Trick Room, and I think I'm actually pretty partial to going with Lily Cole here. Uh, because I do think it's a really strong just partnership for Torkoal in this format. We do obviously have on this team in particular, yet again, Fluttermane is a fast mode, and we do have Shadow Sync Mimikyu, which is also really good for the Trick Room setter being fast. Uh, we do have Palafin, of course, with Jet Punch priority. We have Howl Arcanine, which can at least boost up Palafin and be more deadly. Um, and yeah, and then finally on this team, uh, this team is no fast mode, but this is Hard Trick Room. Personally, I'm not huge on Hard Trick Room, uh, but it can work. Personally, I'm not a fan of it, especially not with Orin Guru. So on this particular team, we are actually going to opt for a Lilligant. I think that Lilligant and Fluttermane as our last two will probably be the best options. Now we can definitely also change out Lilligant for Chien Pao here. However, because of the fact that I have pretty much just the same team actually in my builder, uh, I think the one difference that I have on that particular team, if we go for Dragonite in my builder, uh, is the Trick Room Setter. Uh, Dragonite is literally I think, the only actual difference I have on that team. Um, oh yeah, because that was Furgraph. I actually built that for a channel member, funny enough. Um, so we're going to go with Lilligan here, just to try and get a little bit of spice in the builder. Uh, so Lilligan is pretty simple. Uh, this is actually probably one of the most li linear mons in the entire format. We're going to go with Chlorophyll. This gives us Sleep Powder, Leaf Storm after you, and Protect. This always goes with max speed, max special... Uh, well, you, you typically just go with max, speed, max special attack, just so Leaf Storm does more damage. You can go with Terra Ghost. I don't think I've ever actually seen a Lilligant run a different set than this in this format. If they do, good on whoever runs it, I guess. Uh, like, even for this set, Sleep Powder, After You, Leaf Storm, Encore, actually. Okay, Encore is pretty fire, too. And then, yep, Terra Ghost, Chlorophyll, Focus Sash, um, which makes sense. Uh, I don't think there's any other Lilligants in the top cut, but I do want to double check, of course. Going through, just to make sure, because I don't think there's a lot of Torkoals to begin with in top cut. Uh, yeah, okay, so there was no others. No others, okay, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, so essentially though, this is how you would run Lilligant. Uh, it's a pretty simple option. I do like it a lot in Torkoal because this means that you could run a team like Dragonite, Fluttermane, Lilligant, and Torkoal if you don't need Trick Room, or you can even subsidize out like one of Dragonite or Fluttermane, though I would not recommend Fluttermane if you're going with the fast mode here. Uh, but like Lilligant, Torkoal, Fluttermane is a really good fast option with one of Fake Out Iron Hands with AV, which can be a good pivot into Torkoal again, or you can even go with something like a Dragonite. Especially without Trick Room up, Iron Hands will be one of the slowest mods in the field because of the fact we do have the minus speed set. So it's actually a really good slow pivot into Torkoal where you could maybe go for like a protect with Lilligan in turn one, go for fit, fake out, or even like a sleep powder turn one with fake out. Then you could proceed to go for a volt switch plus protect, and then you could bring in Torkoal and start sweeping through teams. Or even still, you have Flutterman and Torkoal at the late game there. That's pretty good. Uh, the point being is that this is a really good fifth slot for this sort of team. And then finally with Flutterman, uh, despite the fact this is Trick Room, Booster Energy Flutterman is probably as good as it gets here. Uh, the reason for this is because of the fact that on a Booster Energy team, uh, you could definitely still, while we do have the Sun, and that is a really common partner, I do like the idea of having Fluttermane actually being another Trick Room option here. However, we, I think for this team in particular, I'm not going to do that, because I think it's a little bit harder to use, so instead I'm going to go with just a sh simple set with just three attacks and protect. Uh, we're going to go with Terra Fairy, we are going to creep Roaring Moon as usual here, which I actually overshot the EVs, we only need to go to 132. We're gonna go max special attack 116 and then a four and four you can go with a lot bulk giver spread as well I, i'll showcase some other ones but truthfully i don't actually know what they do entirely specifically uh like for example oh that's the same flutter man um here we go this is definitely nope this was not that oh that was the vid from last week um here we go this is definitely a bulkier flutter man uh where i this is a team that i built with clutch where 220 hp 68 special uh fizz def and then 76 special attack essentially just a special attack cut 
uh, we also have the Gilbo team. Uh, this one actually is just a max speed, max special attack, Life Orb, Flutterbane. Uh, Gilbo mentioned when I interviewed them, they just wanted to do damage, which is pretty fair, actually. It's a really good idea. Uh, we could go with Life Orb, Flutterbane here, too. We can go with Specs. We have a lot of options because we're running Sun. I'm still really partial to the speed boosting in this format, though. I do think it's almost essential because of how fast the format leans. Uh, though at the same time, though, with how much priority is going around, uh, you can definitely opt for a life up set and not really be too hurt. Pre-Terra, you are immune to E-Speed, though, and post-Terra, you can become a resistance sucker punch. So I do like the idea of going with this, but if we want it to be a little bit more unique here, we could definitely go with a life up set. Uh, we would probably actually just keep the same investment. The reason being is because of the fact that this will almost be on the field with certainty next to Torkoal. Uh, though, again, the one exception would be next to Dragonite. I do think that there is actual merit to running, like, uh, Dragonite and Fluttermane. Uh, if we threw it on Trick Room, Iron Hands and Fluttermane is also a really good Trick Room lead, even. Uh, and in that case in particular, you'd want to, you did one of your fairy options, being Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam. Uh, with the particular comp being Orin Guru, I would probably actually ditch Moonblast here. Uh, but Moonblast is really valuable. You could even go as far as ditching Protect, to be completely honest. Uh, or Shadow Ball has merit too. I don't like doing Shadow Ball though, because despite the fact this is an extremely dark heavy format, Shadow Ball does have merit against mons like Torkoal to actually get a good offensive option in. Uh, but with this team in particular, we do have a lot of Pokemon, like for example, Dragonite that can dent Torkoal. Uh, our own Torkoal can dent it, especially next to Lilligant. So it's not really the biggest deal. So it is technically an option you could do. But Trick Room can definitely fit in the spot. Same as something like a Power Gem, Thunderbolt, etc. I would not recommend an actual like fourth attack though, unless if you're going to go with Specs. Uh, but Specs does have some merit there. Uh, the point being is that Fluttermane is a really strong offensive option with this core, and I think you can get a lot of merit. Uh, so that is going to be the team today in particular. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and you learned something new. And if you did, let me know down below what you guys want to see next. Uh, this team definitely does have a lot. You can obviously change around it. I, I hope that you guys have learned some other things in particular. Oh, right. I did actually want to mention, Um, I'll, I'll link both versions in, in the description because I do want to show off the Hariyama version because I do think that Hariyama actually has some merit. Um, I don't think it really changes a lot of where we go with the team. Uh, however, I will say that with Hariyama in particular, a couple things that will change. We will actually, we'll probably keep we'll probably go with trick room on fluttermane i do like having hariyama and fluttermane as potential lead here um we will show the discrepancy there um we'll keep dazzling clean and we'll go with protect on a uh, trick room here um i do want to keep this option just for anyone who might want it down below whether you want to change it to fluttermane spread or not but i do want to show over hariyama because i do think that hariyama is actually a really slept on pokemon in this format with like facade fake out close combat and then we can go with knockoff. You don't really need protect on this format. Actually, I think a fake out is plenty, um, but you can still actually run protect with a lot of success here. Um, something else you could actually throw on. Um, so actually let's let's go over all the options. So fake out, close combat, and knockoff. I would argue these three are mandatory. Uh, for your fourth slot, we have a lot of options here. Uh, we can go with, for one, Terra Dark. Um, well, actually, yeah. So for one, we can go with a uh, wide card here. Uh, this set in particular would go with a Terra Dark. Uh, the Terra Dark, of course, gives us a really strong option for size spam cores. Uh, they're a lot less common now, so Terra Dark, Hariyama in particular, isn't as great. Your investment's always going to be the same. You're always going to go with Brave Nature. You're going to go with Zero Speed IV. You are going to go with the Max Attack Adamant, well, the Max Attack Brave, and you're going to go with the Four and Fizz Death. Uh, the reason this is actually very important for Armorage Calcs, actually, funny enough, um, if we look at Hariyama versus Armorage, um, I believe even with the Sun Up, uh, so yeah, with the Terra Dark... Of course, we're going to gain our immunity to Expanding Force. And even with the Sun Up, uh, Arm Rouge actually is now going to be a... Well, okay, so with the Sun Up, it's guaranteed kill. But without Sun Up, actually, Arm Rouge can never actually kill you with Modest Life Orb, uh, which is pretty fucking cool. Not only this, but if we go to a Weakness Policy set, um, so actually, it can take, it can guarantee down a Weakness Policy. Uh, you would need more Spideff for that, but that's fine. Uh, the point being, though, is that Modest Life Orb can actually be guaranteed taken. Uh, if it is Weakness Policy, though, you can actually end up going for like a facade in the following turn, which is another option, Terra Dark, uh, Terra Normal Facade, and you can wild out that way. But uh, anyway, one of the reasons that I do like Hariyama over Iron Hands is this Wide Guard move. I think this is the biggest reason you actually run it, uh, because with Wide Guard, you can actually stop opposing spread options like Eruption Torkoal, Dazzling Gleam Hatterene. Uh, you can actually enable Torkoal into a phenomenal win con next to Hariyama instead of Oren Guru, uh, because instead of going for two eruptions at a time or two heroes at a time, you would stop your opponent from going for basically any spread move, which is typically how people combat Trick Room. Uh, with stuff like Fluttermane as well also being around, this is a pretty relevant option. Uh, now, you can also ditch this for Facade. I think Facade or Protect are both really valuable options. Uh, if you go with Facade, you actually do change the Terra type to Normal. 
Uh, with size spam being a lot less common, this is a pretty valuable option, and we do still have some really good size spam coverage here to begin with, so I do like the idea of having Facade as a normal type. However, I'm going to go with Wide Guard because I am pretty partial to it, and I think it's the best reason to run it here, and we're going to go with the Terror Dark. I did just want to cover that because I did actually forget to cover Hariyama when I covered Iron Hands, uh, but I do think this is a really valuable option here as well. I think Hariyama is really subbed on, and this version of the team is actually the one that we are going to be running tomorrow. So if you guys want to see Hariyama on the channel tomorrow, make sure to stop by. We're going to hit Master Ball this team. I'm finally confident that we're going to hit Master Ball. Um, I really thought the Fleshing would do it. I unironically thought Fleshing would do it, but we're going to hit it with Hariyama instead. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you want to see some more content, of course, like and subscribe. Uh, and answer the comment question of the day. What would you guys like to see me cover next for these builders? Uh, with that said, of course, shout outs to all of our channel members. Your support is greatly appreciated. This being, of course, Josh K Ultra Player, Mia, Zeke Zero, Matt O'Shea, uh, B-Bat, Onata Per, Timo Mueller, Fonzie, Bambambi, Rao Plays, Obo, and Johannes B. If you guys want to see something else on the channel, we have bonus content covering um, history of Mons and how to run the Mons. It's going to be a lot more of a nuanced version of this where we're going to not only cover team builder examples for one play style we'll cover a few different ones uh we're also going to cover different move sets the pokemon can run on those play styles we're going to cover how good they've been through series one through three and a whole different breakdown so it's gonna be a lot more of an in-depth version of this for the members only video so if you are interested in these types of videos the members content will be a lot more of a deep dive into specific pokemon instead of specific play styles and i look forward to seeing you there we also do have the challenge runs going up at the end of the month that the members will get to vote on as well with that said i will see you guys later Peace out, guys.